am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any powers neither height nor depth he really goes into it y'all nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord you may be seated in the house of the Lord if you pray with me and for me I'm going to tag this text through it all. Now for a short presentation. And now God has taken us to about 40 different countries of the world and I've seen him do so many miracles. How Three and a half years ago, I was sick unto death, and I found Jesus Christ to be a healer. And I tell you, he's everything. And I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to tell everybody, all the young people especially, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. You'll never regret any moment that you've given your heart to Jesus. And a song that he's given me after a hard time in my life, a particular time I thought I couldn't sing, I thought I couldn't smile, but he gave me this little song, and I trust that it should be a blessing to you. I've had many tears and sorrow I've had questions for tomorrow There have been times when I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation God gave me blessed consolation That all my trials come to only make me strong places and I've seen millions of faces but there were times when I felt so all alone but right there in my lonely hour it became a precious lonely hour for Jesus let me know that I was his own now I can say through it all, through it all, oh yes, I've learned to trust in Jesus, I've learned to trust in God, through it all, through it all, oh yes, I've learned to depend upon His Word. He's brought me through For if I'd never had a problem I'd never know that God could solve them I'd never know what faith In the word of God could do But now I can tell the world That through it all mm, Through it all Oh yeah Don't you know I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God. Let me tell you that through it all, mm, through it all, oh yes, who oh, I've learned to depend upon His word. Every child of God here tonight, you ought to thank God from every mountain. You should thank Him for those valleys. Oh, you should thank Him for those stars. Oh, that is bringing you through right now. Oh, for if you never have a problem, you never know that God can solve them. You never know what faith in the Word of God could do. But you can stand like a soldier and say, that through it all, or sometimes through the fire, but through it all, oh yes. Don't you know I've learned to trust in Jesus? Don't you know I've learned 
to depend upon his word through my sickness and pain i've learned to depend upon his word when the doctor walked from my bed and shook his head right then i learned to depend upon his word give god praise late great Andre Crouch and that film was back in 1980 before many of us including myself was born but he talked about how through the struggles of life he had to hold on to his faith you know one of the vicissitudes and that's inevitable in life is trouble I'm a fan of Motown music and I think about Marvin Gaye don't shut me down he said, there's only three things for sure, taxes, debt, and trouble. Mm-hmm, in that song, Trouble Man. And you may often wonder, what's going on in my life that I'm going through so much? The Bible says it clearly in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, in the B section, that he causes his own son, his son to rise on the evil and the good and sin reign on the righteous and the unrighteous but through it all the implication is that christians are on the same playing field as the heathens when it comes to difficult times hardships and even troubles have made people doubt the very existence of god and made people even wonder if God even cared. People often ask that eternal question, why? Not just when you're a toddler and want to know why the sky is blue or why do we have to go to church every Sunday? But people ask the question, God, why was my child born or diagnosed with leukemia? Why was my child diagnosed with autism? Why was my child diagnosed or born with autism? Lord, why did my loved one die even after I prayed that you would heal them? Lord, why do you, did you allow, God, you have the ability to make stuff go away, but you allowed this situation to happen to me. Do you feel where I'm going this morning? Well, brothers and sisters, I believe I preach since I'm here. If this was one of your questions, the short answer to a long, we uh, could be long. The short answer is God is sovereign. He does what he wants to do when he wants to do it and even how he wants to do it. And he doesn't even need your permission to do it. If you need a biblical example, read the first two chapters of Job. I know it's a long book, but you only have to go through the first two chapters. Can I sum it up for you? God called a meeting of all of his angels and the devil showed up because he was an angel from the beginning. And he showed up and he said, he asked him a question to make sure the devil knew his job. Where have you been? I've been roaming the earth to and from. He said, have you considered my servant Job? Oh, I thank God for teaching that doing the word ministry. You go through stuff because you could be considered. <laughs> Why in the world am I going through things? Because you've been anointed and trained and you've been getting enough word that you have matured enough that you should be able to handle some kind of trouble at this point of your life. This brother Job was afflicted not just once but twice. And yet he did not sin against God he didn't lose his faith he lost his money and even lost his children now you talk about something I want to shake your faith and make you mad and want to give up even his own wife called him a fool and said curse God and die your baby boo your loved one your honey boo whatever you call your significant loved one the very one who was close to you Tells you to give up your faith. And yet you got to be like Job and say through it all. Oh, you got to understand, brothers and sisters, that God still loves you. 
through it all, God still has a good plan for you. I'm not lying to you. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. What a word of encouragement through this prophet. And this was for the sake of context written to the Israelites who were in captivity in Babylon. They were exiled out of the Holy Land because of their own sin. And God put them in captivity and said, I may even give you some ch some names. Hello, that's where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from. Those were not their Hebrew names. But God said, I'm still going to send you a, a prophet to go with you even in exile to encourage you to come back to me. Romans 8, 28, as we, uh, you might have known this things, and we know that all things, uh, all things, all things, the good works for your good, and even the bad works for your good. All things work together for the good of those who love God. Do you love God? Amen. Are you just suffering just to be suffering? Mm. And are called according to his purpose. We've got to be that have that spiritual tenacity, that thickness of skin to be able to be trained up to go through some things like Job said in Job 13 and 15. I gave you a homework assignment for the first two chapters, but 13 and 15, he said, though he slay me yet, yet. You've got to have a yet spirit that you're going to stay in the fight, that you're not going to give up. You're not going to stop coming to church. You're not going to curse the pastors. You're not going to curse God. And you're going to say, I'm going to stay in this thing, even though I'm hurting, even though I'm bleeding. My money is funny. My job is going crazy. I'm going to stay in this thing. Yet will I trust him? You've got to get some encouragement to say through it all. Maybe many of you have asked God to perform a miracle in your life. And you say, God, you performed this miracle for this person, but you didn't perform it for me. And you're hurt. But as I recall the words of our own pastor, he says, and I quote, don't self-pity by comparing yourself to others. That's why you got to come to Bible study on Wednesday night to get you some extra. <laughs> Why? Because though you may have many issues or things that you have to go through to become better. Trouble only comes to make you better. Trouble only comes to make you better. You wouldn't be where you are if you had not gone through what you went through. You may have these problems. I said, man, I, I just don't know. But sometimes people are praying for the very problems that you have. If they said, oh, that's all you're going through. I wish that was all I had. Ooh, what are you talking about? My car is giving me trouble. Somebody would love to have a car. This house or this apartment is too small. Somebody would have a lo love to have a place to live. And if you need a visual, come with Pastor Najmar to the Panama City Rescue Mission. They'd love to have a place to live or go to Bethel Village, sisters. This job is getting on my last nerve. Somebody would gladly take your job without complaining. Keep complaining. You're going to give your boss a reason because you keep drawing attention to yourself. Or here in Florida, we might say, oh, it's too hot outside. Oh, I've done that one, too. But somebody either in the hospital or somebody who's locked up, incarcerated, will love to feel the sun on their face. We must learn to be content in some situations. Philippians 4 and 11 puts it this way. Not that I speak in regard to need, Paul says, because he was in jail, locked up for being a Christian. But through it all, for I have learned that whatever state I am in, whatever state to be content, he's in jail. Innocent and in jail. But through it all. Much like Bible study, Pastor Mike is teaching us about having a firm foundation. Which is rooted in the obedience of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So that when trouble comes. And it will come when the floods hit, 
when the storm rises. We had a, a storm a couple of days ago that, that flooded up Tender Parkway. Comes to us and the unsaved. You won't be moved by what you see. Moved by what you hear. You will still say that Jesus Christ is still my firm foundation and I'm going to hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand, and build my hopes on the things that are eternal. In Bible study, we also talked about in the previous lesson of maturity and the importance of having it. Not being stagnant in our relationship and our faith in Christ because your relationship and your faith go hand in hand. This is not about religion, which is about it's about a relationship with Jesus Christ of knowing him and he knowing you. And that's what's going to grow your faith. One of the points of the sermon is that we should not be a glass jaw Christian. What does it mean to have a glass jaw? I'm so glad you asked. It is about <laughs> it is a boxing reference that refers to a fighter who can't take a punch. Growing up in the 80s, I remember the Nintendo game. Shh, shh, Mike Tyson's punch out. And the first fighter you would take is, is, was Glass Joe. Go back one. Go back one. Too fast. Too fast. Glass Joe. The fighter was go down so easily after a few punches and almost instantly after the super punch. And he was going down. How do you react when trouble comes your way? As believers, we must be strong.